So, this class I will discuss about uh, few uh, things, those are related to retaining wall design. Okay. So, in the last class I have discussed that how to check the bearing capacity of the retaining wall uh, and how to check the no tension condition. But sometimes in, in, in your uh, problems you will find that it may be asked that suppose if this is your retaining wall it may be asked that what would be the B value such that there will not be any tension in the retaining wall base or your stress in one end is exactly 0. So, that means you have to determine the B such that soil reaction is exactly 0 at one end. Okay? So, that means you have a soil reaction value is like this. So, what you have to do in that case that we know, but we do not know the B value, we, we know this value say 0 0.3, this H value is also known say 6 meter unit weight of concrete, unit weight of uh, soil all are known, okay? but we do not know the B value. So, in that case, so there is a possibility that your this weight can, if this is the center line or this is the base and if it can act this side of the uh, um, center line or this side of this center line. That means, your say resulting force or the all the resulting force. So, as I mentioned that your resulting force may act any side of this wall or depending upon that which side the resulting force will act, your distribution may change. Your distribution will be either this one or it may like this also depending upon which side the load is acting. Okay. So, now if your load is this is B, this is your toe, you are taking the moment from the toe, if the resultant force or the reaction is acting left side of the B by 2 or center. Okay. So, this is your B by 2. If your X or resultant force is acting like this, okay. so that means this is your X bar. Then your E will be this will be the E in that case. Okay. This will be the E, E will be B by 2 minus x bar and x bar how we will calculate? x bar is all the resisting moment minus the overturning moment divided by the uh, all the vertical forces and as it is exactly 0. So, E value will be B by 6, this is B by 2 minus x bar. So, in this equation you put, you calculate all the resisting moment, you calculate all the overturning moment, all the vertical force, but only unknowns will be the B in terms of B, this part will be in terms of B, you put this in this expression, then only unknown will be the B, you calculate the B value, that is one part. Now, if, if the resultant force 
or the reaction is acting right side of the of B by 2 or center. That means, it is acting here okay? and x bar is from here to here, you are calculating. Okay? So, in that case, so this will be your E, because this is the center. So, this will be your E in that case, because red 1 is the case 1, red uh, blue 1 is the case 2. So, in that case, your E value will be x bar minus b by 2, okay? because this is x bar is from the toe, this is always from the toe okay? and this is minus b by 2. So, again the x bar E will be the b by c exactly 0 x bar minus b by 2, x bar will get from here the same way. Okay? So, this may be the one type of problem, because I have discussed by knowing the, I have discussed or I have solved the problems by knowing the B value, we know the B value, but if the B value is unknown, then you can get the B value such that there should not be any tension at the base of the soil or the uh, at the base of the retaining wall or it is exactly 0, either this one or this one depending upon which direction your resultant force is or the reaction is acting. Okay. So, the next one discuss that what is the weefold or how to minimize the water effect in the backfill. Suppose the problem is that if we have the water in the backfill, then that water pressure will also act on the retaining wall. So, as you have uh, noticed that during the earth pressure calculations, so water pressure is huge one and we will not apply any earth pressure coefficient also in the water pressure. Water uh, pressure calculation that value is 1. Okay? So, that is why in the in case of uh, soil if we have the water pressure then that your pressure or the force acting on the retaining wall will increase. So, we have to minimize the water table effect. So, preferably we uh, use the sandy soil because here the permeability is more. So, your water can easily pass from that place okay? and uh, the generally cohesion, cohesive soil we do not recommend, but sometimes the, if it is not possible to avoid the cohesive soil also, then we have to provide some drainage path. Okay? So, that this water can easily pass through that drainage path and can remove from that side. So, that your pressure acting on the retaining wall can be reduced. So, this way this is the we fall by which we can provide the we fall we can remove the water. Okay? This is the holes which is provided in the retaining wall, if it is backfill is sandy soil. So, that will give you the it, water will pass through this one and here we can provide the filter material. Similar this is another um, kind of uh, drainage path, this is a um, perforated pipe which is passing this perpendicular to this plane and it is passing throughout the retaining wall. So, the water can enter here and it can pass through this pipe. Then uh, we can provide the vertical filter also on the wall and that if it is a fine grain soil, these two are for the coarse grain soil. If it is fine grain soil, we can provide the vertical filter and the, as well as the weave full and we can provide some additional inclined filter. So, that water can pass through this filter and can enter into weave full and can pass from this side. So, these are the uh, drainage uh, procedures. And the next one that I want to discuss that as I mentioned during our design of retaining wall, we are not considering the passive part, because our retaining wall, if you see that retaining wall part that this is the retaining wall. Okay. So, this may be the black fill, this is the below foundation. So, this part is passive zone, okay? this portion. Here it is active pressure, okay? this active pressure is acting fine, but here the passive pressure is acting, is not it? So, this is the passive pressure is acting. If it is a retaining uh, uh, sandy soil, then this 
is the passive pressure that will act. Okay. So, this is the passive pressure, this pressure is the passive because your wall is moving this direction. So, this is the active side. So, this is the passive side, but we are not considering this passive pressure. Okay. So, but sometimes if your uh, design is unsafe against sliding. Okay. So, what we will provide do? We provide some shear key. Okay. This is called key. So, in such case, we provide this passive resistance also because this shear key, this is the passive resistance. So, we provide to calculate this portion of the force and then we add these things with the with the your passive resistance part. So, in that with the uh, sliding bearing capacity calculation. So, if this is your passive force P P. So, then the factor of safety against sliding will be summation of all vertical forces into tan delta plus this B into C A if the equation is there plus P P. Okay. This P P is the passive resistance divided by summation of all horizontal force or generally the act, uh, P active force. Okay. This active force which is acting okay, the horizontal component of this P active force P H A. So, this in that case this passive resistance we introduce during our uh, design of the key and we design the or determine the factor of safety. Okay. But again when you design this passive or calculate this passive force we reduce the phi value and if it is C phi value then both phi and C values are reduced because it is doubtful that the full passive condition will be developed under this situation. So, as it is doubtful, so it is recommended you reduce the C and phi value during the design, but this is the design procedure for with the key. Okay. So, next one that uh, I will start is the sheet pile. Okay. So, sheet pile is another type of flex uh, retaining uh, structure. So, what is the uh, basic difference between the sheet pile and the retaining wall? So, in the retaining wall that we have uh, designed till now, these are a rigid type of retaining wall. Okay. So, the wall weight or the wall rigidity will resist the force that is acting on the, on the retaining wall, but sheet pile is a flexible type of retaining structure and it is generally temporary kinds of kind of retaining structure. So, what is sheet pile? So, sheet pile is this is the uh, uh, one particular this steel sheet pile section. So, these are attached in this form and ultimately it is installed in this fashion. Okay. So, it is this one there is a junction okay there is a junction here also there is a junction here also th so this is one panel then there is an junction another panel there is a junction so th this is the same way this is one panel you can see this is one panel this is another panel so it is this is the junction point between the two panels. So, this is one panel and then similarly another panel will come here. Okay. So, this is the sheet pile and it is installed here. So, you can see, so this side of the sheet pile is the backfill and this side is either water body or it is void. So, this is the retaining kind of retaining um, wall. Okay. So, and then So, what is the basic difference of the um, sheet pile and the retaining wall? As I mentioned, in the sheet pile, generally 
we do not consider the P p. If you consider the P p, then this P p will give you the additional resistance and you can add it during your stability check as I discussed during the key design. So, but th the retaining wall here passive resistance we do not consider. So, the active force is is taken by the wall itself. Okay? So, this wall is rigid. So, th that wall will take this active force and as I have designed these things during our two cases, one is gravity retaining wall design and one is cantilever retaining wall design. So, I have shown that how you will design this uh, retaining wall, but the sheet pile is a flexible kind of retaining structure. So, here this wall we will not consider this we will consider this weightless during the design, we will not consider the weight of the retaining wall. So, now who will take give you the resistance? So, in case of sheet pile the resistance will be given by the soil. So, here we have to consider the passive part also, otherwise we will not get any resistance from anywhere. Because here in the in the normal retaining wall design we are taking the weight of the soil or we are taking the weight of the wall during the stability checks okay during stability checks uh, overturning or the uh, sliding but here we are not considering the weight of the wall because these are very thin you can see this thickness are very small so that's why we will not consider the weight of this uh, steel sections so but the resistance the passive resistance that we are getting from the soil based on that we have to design this sheet pile. So, the depth of the sheet pile here d f will be much higher as compared to the depth of the retaining wall. Okay. So, this depth of the sheet pile is much higher as compared to the depth of the retaining wall, because this soil below the dredge level or the sheet pile base will give you the resistance. Now, what is dredge level and what is the, this is the uh, this is the your ground level. Dredge level means if from this picture you can see this picture. Okay. So, here you can see this side is backfill and this side if it is uh, wide then the base of this portion is called the dredge level. Okay. This is the base of this uh, wide portion. So, that is called the dredge level. Okay. So, this is the similar another kind of uh, retaining structure I will discuss later on, but here if this is the sheet pile, these are the sheet pile, this is the dredge level. This base portion is called, this is the dredge level. Okay. So, I, if I draw this part, so this is the wall, this is the dredge level. Now, if we have another wall in this side and then this is another soil. So, this portion is because this portion is void, either it is water is body is there or this portion of soil is been excavated. So, this is called the dredge level okay? and this is the ground level. Now, this sheet piles can be two types. Okay? One is the cantilever sheet pile, another is the anchor sheet pile. Now, what is cantilever sheet pile? This cantilever sheet pile where is inserted into the soil, but in the anchor sheet pile, this, uh, this portion of the top portion of the sheet pile is anchored into the soil. So, you can see this is the cantilever sheet pile, example of the cantilever sheet pile, this is the example of the can, uh, anchor sheet pile. You can see so this top portion of this uh, sheet pile is anchored into the soil. So, what is the advantage of that? Because in the normal sheet pile as I, I have mentioned that most of the um, resistance is coming from the passive resistance that the soil is given below the dredge level. So, you if cantilever sheet pile the height of the um, sheet pile or the depth of the sheet pile below the dredge level is very high. So, to reduce that we can anchor this one such that 
we can provide a tension force already in this direction or the anchor force in direction. So, that this depth will be reduced. Okay. So, now if this this height of this sheet pile or this white portion is very high, then also we can provide this anchorage. So, first I will discuss about the cantilever sheet pile and then I will discuss about the anchor sheet pile. I will discuss this cantilever sheet pile both for sea soil as well as the phi soil and the anchor sheet pile for the sea soil as well as the phi soil. Okay. So, this is our the cantilever sheet pile and the anchor sheet pile. So, first I will discuss about the cantilever sheet pile in granular soil or the phi soil. Okay. Okay. Granular soil or phi soil where C is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is my sheet pile and we are representing this sheet pile with a, with a single line okay, as we are not considering the weight of the sheet pile. This is the ground level and this is the dredge level. Okay. So, this portion is void okay, and this portion is the soil. So, soil is here, soil is here and definitely soil is here also. So, these are the different. So, this portion is the void either water is there or there is no soil. Okay, There is no soil. Now, when these, this soil will apply the pressure on this wall. So, this will try to rotate. So, we are assuming that this is rotating like this. Okay, so, it will rotate about a point say O below the dredge level. Okay. So, it will rotate about a point O, but I do not know the position of this O that I will determine. So, now you uh, this is rotating about a point O below the dredge level. So, this is the deflected sheet pile. and this is the original sheet pile. Okay. So, now as I mentioned this total portion is soil and this is also soil. So, I can divide this portion in four parts. Okay. So, what is those four parts? So, So, this is the part 1, this is part 2, this is part 3 and this is part 4. Okay. So, I have divided this portion of soil, these four parts because all are soil, the same soil I have divided four parts. So, I can write that my part 1, this will be either active or passive. You know, what is that part? So, it here you can see if you remove this lower portion of the O, then if the upper portion this all soil here the wall is deflected in this direction. Okay? So, that means it is away from the back field. So, from this portion it is away from the back field. So, my part 1 is in active state. Okay, or active condition. Now, the part 2 or the region 2. So, region 2 is this portion of the wall, it will deflect towards the soil. Okay. So, it is towards the back veil. So, part 2 will be the passive state or passive condition. 
Okay. Then the part 3. So, part 3 again this is the soil. So, it is moving away from the backfill. Okay. So, in the part 3 it is moving away from the backfill from this side to this side. So, from if I consider only this part 3 soil then this retaining wall in this part 3 region is moving away from the backfill. So, this will be the active state. Now, if I consider the fourth region, so in this region only the fourth region this retaining wall is moving towards the soil. So, this will be the passive state. Okay, so, we have four state of a retaining wall cantilever retaining wall or four region for the cantilever retaining uh, sheet pile if it is in phi soil. So, we have assumed the rotation is about a point O below the dredge level. So, we have four parts or four region. So, region 1 is active condition, region 2 is the passive condition, region 3 is again the active condition and region 4 is again the passive condition. Now, what I will do? I will draw the active pressure diagram passive pressure diagram and the net pressure diagram separately. So, this is the this is the dredge level, this is the point about which the wall rotates. Okay. So, I am just uh, taking this portion. So, I am increasing this part also. Fine. So, my up to this point it is the because this soil up to the dredge level the soil the up to the dredge level soil is only one side this side okay? right hand side left hand side there is no soil. So, the right hand side will be the active condition. Okay? So, this is the active condition in the right hand side and as I mentioned up to this stage 1 or the state 1 or the region 1 it is active condition. So, up to here it is active condition. Then the active state will start from this portion is also active condition. Okay. So, this is the active pressure diagram. Okay. So, this is the active pressure diagram. Fine, because this is the region 1. So, this is the region 1 which is total active and region 3 this is also active. So, region 3 is active condition and region 1 is active condition. And region 1 the stress diagram will start from the top and region 2 or the 3 the stress diagram will start from the dredge level because this is no soil. Soil start from this portion only. So, this is the stress diagram. Okay. So, I can write this portion is, is if this is k is the coefficient of active earth pressure k gamma h if this is the h. Okay. And if you uh, this portion is A and this is the depth of the sheet pile is D. So, I can write this portion diagram uh, this value is K A into gamma H plus A because this is the A part, this is the H part. So, up to here this value is K A gamma H and this portion this value is K A gamma H plus A because this is this point. Similarly, here I can write that this value is gamma K A into H plus D. Okay. And here this is the active part. 
So, this portion also I can write that this is k a gamma into a, okay? because this is here it is starts from 0. So, this will be k a gamma into a and this one will be k a gamma into d. Okay, the total one is d. So, I can write this is the active pressure diagram. Okay. So, in the next class what I will do that I will draw the passive pressure diagram and then I will draw the net pressure diagram, then I will do the analysis. Thank you.